Hey friends, Megan here. So today we're in a little bit different spot. We're actually sitting inside the RV. So if it sounds a little funny, that's why. We went out and bought a smoker today, so Kenneth and Declan are outside getting dinner ready on the new smoker. We had a smoker before we started our RV travels, and we really missed having a way to be able to grill and smoke our food. It's one of our favorite ways to eat meat, and so we've been looking forward towards the time when we could buy another one. But a smoker is heavy, and having to cart it from spot to spot just wouldn't have been worth it. Plus, it takes up a whole lot of room that we just don't have when we live in a small RV. But we realized this morning that we're in the process of buying our homestead property. And we're only a couple weeks away, and everything is going smoothly, so we're pretty sure it's going to be ours. And that means we only have to move the RV one more time. And it was that realization that hit us that was like, one more time? We could totally move the smoker three hours away to the homestead property. It's not that far. And while it's heavy, we can make room for it to do one trip. As soon as Kenneth realized that today, we were set to go to the store and buy a smoker. Now, in the garden tour later, I'm sure you'll see the smoker sitting out there and Kenneth getting it all ready to go for her food. So excuse the mess on the patio, that's what's going on. But getting down to the smoker, having this realization that we're only moving one more time really made me reflect on our journey. You may not know this, we haven't always lived this way. We've lived in an RV for almost two years now. But before that, we had normal jobs and we're a normal family who owned a house that we had a huge mortgage for on three and a half acres in a town in Georgia. I was a nurse at the health department working Monday through Friday. Declan was in daycare. Kenneth worked second shift. So he worked the afternoon evening shift from three to 11. It was supposed to be a five day a week thing, but it ended up being six days a week. But if you can do the math, I worked day shift, Monday through Friday, had to be there 9 to 5, but on Tuesdays I had to be there until 6.30. Declan was in daycare and Kenneth worked from 3 to 11. So by the time I got off work, picked Declan up from daycare, got home, Kenneth was at work. By the time Kenneth got off work, drove the hour home, we were asleep and we would get up, start our day all over again. And we very rarely got to see Kenneth and he very rarely got to see us. It got to the point where to be able to see his son, Kenneth was having to go to Declan's daycare and eat lunch with him because they were working six days a week in the plant. He was working for Shaw Industries. Um, he was a mechanic in their carpet making facility. He, he maintained all the machines and it ended up being a six day a week job and he got one day off. That was madness. We struggled through the schedule for about a year and then we decided we couldn't do it anymore. We were discussing Christmas and how it was going to be so much fun to have Declan there with us for Christmas and talking about his first birthday. And I became completely overwhelmed. Overwhelmed is probably actually an understatement. Here we were. Kenneth barely ever got to see Declan. I was basically single mom in it. We were at ends, you know, while we weren't fighting, we just didn't see each other enough to even have fights. Uh, the one day a week we got with each other was just absolutely precious to us. But there was a space forming because we didn't see each other. And you can't have a marriage that way. And we couldn't be parents that way. I mean, it sounds crazy, but our son was turning one. Kenneth had probably only gotten to see him maybe 50 days out of the year because of our crazy schedules. And when you put it that way, life like that, it doesn't seem worth it. There is this couple that goes by the term fate unbound. And they quit their 9 to 5 jobs and traveled in their RV and they boondock, which means they live off the grid. They don't have to pay for their stay like 99% of their time. They were able to do it on a small budget and just be together. That's what my heart was longing for. My family needed time to just be together and I had to find a way to do it. So we talked about doing this and we decided, yeah, that's kind of the direction we wanted to go. And then Christmas came and went. And the day after Christmas, I woke up to a house that was overcrowded with materialistic objects and none of it meant anything to me. I was that overwhelmed and that full of anxiety. None of it meant anything. I didn't want to deal with any of it. 
Declan played with a few things for like all of an hour and then he was done and it was just sitting there. And so we decided we were moving forward with full-time RVing. And from the point where we decided we were doing this to we bought an RV and sold our house was two months. Two months. No wonder our families thought we were insane. We finished the remodels on our house because we couldn't sell a house that wasn't finished being remodeled. Sold all of our materialistic objects except for what would fit in our RV. Bought the RV. Put the house on the market and sold the house. And figured out how to live in an RV. Because neither of us had ever done it. All in two months. And it was like one thing after another. Things lined up for us. Our house was on the market three days before we accepted a full asking price offer. And that was before this crazy house boom. And so it just all lined up. I actually found a job listed randomly online through coolworks.com to work at Yellowstone National Park. I had the job lined up and everything. I mean, it was so easy to make the transition that I knew it had to be a higher power lining things up one after the other for us to be able to do this lifestyle. And I don't regret it. Not one bit. I don't regret moving into an RV and going traveling. That is exactly what my family needed. We had about a month and a half before I had to be at Yellowstone to work to just travel and be together as a family. And we made some amazing memories. And we got time to re-know each other, reconnect, and to just live. Now, don't get me wrong. Those first few months RVing were hard. You're having to adjust to going from seeing each other one day a week to being all cramped within 200 square feet and living together all the time. It was not easy. Tempers rose, there were arguments, but we made it through it and we grew closer in the process. Now, we RV'd for a good year and I had no plans on stopping. We had seen several national parks. We had met some amazing people along the way, but we were kind of thinking maybe... Maybe we wanted a home base, somewhere that we knew and that was ours and that we felt safe and comfortable at all times, just a home base. And then on Facebook, I come across a post by some families on an RV group and they were talking about homesteading in their RV. And guys, I had never heard of homesteading before. I mean, yeah, I heard about it in my history books, you know, back in the old days where they gave you a plot of land if you proved that you could work it and stuff like that. That homesteading I knew of, but modern day homesteading, I had no clue that that was a thing. No clue. Until Facebook introduced me to it. And I became so obsessed with it. It's the only word you could say. Obsessed. I started watching YouTube videos about it. I listened to podcasts about it. I have books on it. I have been watching people's homesteading vlogs to see what a day in the life of a homesteader is and watching them over and over and over until Kenneth would ask me, can we please watch something besides YouTube? It was like, all of a sudden I knew that that was a way of life that called to me. I don't have any homesteading experience. I don't have family members who are homesteading, obviously, since I'd never heard of it. The only time I've thought about a farm is to have horses, and that was it. That was the extent. But being an RV family and traveling and seeing a simple way of life to live, it changed us. It really did. And I know that we needed to go through that process to end up where we are today. And so, when I was obsessed with these YouTube videos, I started asking Kenneth, what do you think if we become homesteaders? What do you think if we had a farm? What do you think if we went out and bought a bunch of chickens and pigs? Do you think Declan would enjoy it? Do you think we would enjoy it? And he started looking into it. And he started researching. And next thing I knew, Kenneth was talking about what type of pigs he wanted to buy and what types of chickens he wanted. And I wouldn't say he became obsessed. But it was like he just slowly transitioned into, okay, we're doing this. And that's how it always goes. I am the one who jumps into a project feet first. Kenneth is more like, um, here's the logistics. You know, we should look into this. He's got a notebook where he writes stuff down. And so we kind of balance each other out. But I just wanted y'all to know kind of where we come from, where we started, and how we ended up here. 
it wasn't something we've seen growing up. It's not something that we've always kind of thought about. It was very much not necessarily a coincidence, but an act of fate. It was, we decided we needed a change. Hello, YouTube randomly shows us some videos about RVing family. And I'm like, okay, this is the change we need to make. And then it was very smoothly, everything fell out into place. And we just kind of followed this path as it fell into place. And it all worked. And I'm like, okay, if everything is working this well, then this is absolutely probably the path we need to be on. And then randomly I found out about homesteading. And we began to talk. And we began to have discussions. And all the craziness with COVID is going on. And we began to feel insecure in our full-time traveling lifestyle and not having a way to provide for our son, not having a safe place to go to, not having a home base where we could hunker down if we needed to. And that, that pushed us. That got us thinking. It got us talking about a new direction. But a direction where we don't go back to the same place we were. I know Kenneth wants to get back into projects and work in and everything. And I've continued to work throughout this whole thing. I mean, I've taken breaks here and there. I picked up travel nursing because it gave me the option of working three days a week and being able to provide for my family where Kenneth would have to work five and six days a week. I was not ready to lose my husband to a job again. Not ready to give up the life that we've had where we've grown so close together. And I'm still not. And we know there's going to be hardships, and we know there's going to be struggles, and we know that homesteading is very possibly going to break us down before it builds us up. But we have grown so much stronger during this almost two years of our being that I know we can survive these hardships now, and we wouldn't have been able to if we had jumped straight from a 9-to-5 job into homesteading. It wouldn't have worked that way for us. You see this RV lifestyle on on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, and everybody thinks it's so glamorous. And yes, we have seen some amazing sights, and we have met some incredible people. Something we will always consider part of our family. You know who you are, and you know that we love you, and you know you have to come visit our homestead. But RV life, it's not all rainbows. It's not all vacation. We've had issues that we have had to adapt and overcome, but every single thing is preparing us for the next step in our life. I have begun a container garden. If you haven't seen it, stay tuned to the end of this because it will. I will be showing you my update for the container garden. I have learned what aphids are. I have learned about hornworms and I have battled them today. Let me tell you. Whew, hornworms. We're not friends. I have had garden failures already. I mean, I'm just learning. And I've so far had some garden successes. And each day, we put ourselves towards learning a new skill we need for homesteading. We make it a point to be able to try different meats so that we know what we want to raise on our homestead for meats. It's not like we're going to go out and buy a couple goats and just raise them up and butcher them and think we're going to like the meat. We're learning ahead of time what the meat tastes like, how it's best to cook it, how it is to break that animal down. And if you're in this process and if you're thinking maybe homesteading is right for you, Watch my video of the five things that you need to start doing now to prepare you to homestead. Because those are five things that we are already doing. Five things that we think will make us better homesteaders. Now, we do have homesteading property under contract. 16.7 acres here in South Carolina. We have so many plans to do with this property and we hope you're along for the ride. We are starting with raw land. Straight up wooded land. There's nothing there right now except for trees. And we have a long way to go. And we hope you are there to join us along this process. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about us. And if you have any questions about going from a 9 to 5 job, full time traveling in an RV, and now becoming homesteaders, drop them in the comments. I am willing to answer that. This video is all about getting to know a little bit of our history. So you can see where we're coming from and what our outlook is on this homestead. We're not looking for the glamorous homesteading life. We're looking for a life that allows us to stay together as a family, that allows us to provide for our family, that allows us to live a simple life that we've become accustomed to. That's what we're looking for. And you mix in some barnyard animals and we are ready to jump in feet first. So don't forget to like and subscribe and all that jazz. We love having you around. Stay tuned for the container garden tour. 
Hey friends, time for the garden update. Check out this tomato plant. It's got lots of baby tomatoes coming on it. The basil's looking kind of puny, but it's growing. As you can see, I got a new basket of plants. It's actually potatoes. Um, they're just store-bought ones that had started sprouting, so I put them in a basket with some dirt. We're going to see if they grow. The pepper plants are starting to produce little bitty fruits. They're so cute. Do you see it back there? There's a few on this pepper plant. And there's a few more on this one as well. We've got lots of flowers coming up though. So I'm hoping for a pretty good pepper harvest. Now my banana pepper plant, which you can see right here, has just started getting some blossoms on it. So no baby peppers yet. The other tomato plant looks good. It's got lots of tomatoes going on it. You can see Kenneth in the background with his new smoker. Sorry the mess. He was just getting it unboxed and up and going. Anyways, I hope you enjoy your garden tour for this time. And see you again next time. Bye now.